NRACA's Cooperative Research Network partnered with the Dakota Electric Association and the city of Apple Valley to test several LED lamps. The purpose of this demonstration was to determine the cost effectiveness, efficiency, and consumer attitudes toward LED lamps. Uh, with the current economic challenges that cities are facing today, uh, most communities are looking for any way they can find to reduce operating costs. Uh, this project uh, provided the City of Apple Valley a great opportunity to partner with Dakota Electric uh, in research products uh, that could potentially reduce energy consumption and reduce costs for us ultimately. We have about 3,400 streetlights throughout Apple Valley and um, certainly looking at potential conversion uh, to LED. We know it's an emerging technology, uh, but before we aggressively pursue that, we want to do the research behind it, make sure that it's uh, good products, that they're reliable, uh, that they will produce an actual energy savings and a payback over time. One concern that the city had was the, the appearance of LED streetlights and how they may appear differently to residents. Uh, so their input and feedback into the acceptance of those streetlights are very important. We certainly do appreciate the opportunity to work with Dakota Electric. I know there's been many questions that were received in terms of potential conversion to LED streetlight technology. And this process has allowed us to take a look at the lights and actually see them uh, operate long term in our community and evaluate them. One of the biggest bills that the city gets every month from us is street lighting. So they wound up with some uh, resource recovery dollars to put on the project to determine if we're going to make this investment, which one do we want to go with. There's so much hype with the uh, LEDs that they really want to make sure that they got it done correctly the first time. The street that we're on here is next to the high school's football field. Historically, there's been no lights on here at the end of the football game when all the moms and dads are picking up their kids. So the, the city was happy to light it up here. The school was happy for the safety issues of after the football games. It's nice to show that we're very proactive and like this demonstration project to say, hey, we're going above and beyond just the normal things. We're going to get out there on the cutting edge and see what we can do to help. You know, we really appreciate the fact that we're partnering with multiple people here. CRN, um, the, the city, the Joyce Foundation, it, it really is a true partnership. And that's what we're trying to prove, is that it takes full partnerships rather than just utility-driven to get the energy conservation message out. I can't imagine that a city and a, a utility would work so closely together, and I appreciate it very much. And from the very beginning, Dakota Electric has been supportive of our community, being forward thinking in energy efficiency, and we'll be able to save money on this project along with making our community safer. I hadn't seen LED streetlights before. Uh, it's a great experience, I want to say an eye-opening experience, if you will. My preference would have been G, I believe, the last one uh, on the street. Um, it, it, for a residential, it seemed to be more focused, um, and the uh, pattern was appropriate. It didn't bleed over. There wasn't a lot of uh, a lot of broadcast. Uh, the next one up, B, uh, too bright, too broadcast would be good application in a industrial or a major thoroughfare application. But when you're talking about putting them in a residential neighborhood, um, you know we want to light up the street for security purposes, but not necessarily uh, put a spotlight on the front of the house. The very end one down here, I liked is my favorite. And why? Um, it threw off a good amount of light. I thought it was bright enough to see everything that you needed to see on the street. It doesn't cause a lot of spots in your eyes when you look at the light, but the light was really clear and I thought it was just about the right brightness. When you're driving down the street at night, um, I think there was one there that kind of threw out a lot of light um, just at you when you're coming at it from a distance. The other two seem to keep that glare at a minimum. I'd have to say B is my favorite though because it's bright enough to be in a na neighborhood, but not bright enough to trespass and keep somebody up. When you look at the old high pressure sodium, they cause a lot of glare and a lot of spots in your eye and the color is a little more yellow and you can't see the colors as well in, on your surroundings when you're underneath that one. For instance, I'm looking at a potential crash scene here and the color right even where we under here under, this, this, under the light right here, you can see that the hues are distorted and we can't really see the street as clear as when we're down underneath the LEDs. Everything on the street seemed to pop out at us. Our police officers, our firefighters, and our citizens are able to have a safer community 
I think with the LED light. The study concluded that LEDs provided substantial energy savings compared to high pressure sodium. Also of interest was that focus group participants preferred LEDs to traditional lighting by a large margin. The efficiency of the LED lamps were not enough to offset the high initial cost. Payback is longer than many end user consumers are looking for. LEDs are still an emerging technology. Co-ops should consider pilot tests, like the one at Dakota Electric, before embarking on wide-scale deployments. Only time will tell if LEDs will emerge as the winner in the race to find an efficient source of light. To learn more about LEDs and other CRN-sponsored test sites, visit cooperative.com.